Hey guys, this is Mark here from ShotKit. Um, here's another quick tip that I've got for you. Uh, this time it's regarding Lightroom and um, speeding up your workflow. Um, it's based on something that I heard at a Sam Hurd workshop in Portland um, earlier this year. Um, but I've modified the tip slightly to suit my own workflow. Um, and I think that it can speed up yours too. So it involves something called smart previews. Um, I'm sure that if you're proficient with Lightroom, you'll know what smart previews are, but for those who don't, um, smart previews are sort of like a miniature RAW file. Um, sorry about that, that's my uh, son that I'm just minding at the same time as doing this. Um, smart previews are a they're, a, they're an editable preview, a much smaller version of your original file, um, and they were launched with, with Lightroom 5. Um, on the screen now, I'm actually using Lightroom 6, but... This is still a tip that applies to Lightroom 5, um, and smart previews were, um, they were a real, uh, they're a great thing that, um, that Adobe brought out with Lightroom 5 that allows uh, you to essentially take um, your huge photo catalogs with you uh, when you travel or um, actually access your catalogs um, from a remote location. Um, now, why that's important is because uh, obviously we, we take a lot of photos, um, especially as wedding photographers, and oftentimes we are on the road uh, and we need to be able to edit them or access them um, using our laptops or iPads or whatever mobile devices that we have. Um, so um, smart previews are a lot smaller, so that's the key thing. Um, they're obviously faster to use in Lightroom than uh, editing the original file uh, due to their, their file size. So this is the key, um, one of the key things with smart previews uh, that you've probably noticed if you're using them um, already, you'll see that, uh, for instance, editing on your laptop rather than on your main workstation, so where you are using just the smart preview, um, Lightroom is a lot snappier, it loads quicker. Um, whenever you apply a develop preset or whatever it is that you use, um, it just is much, much quicker. Um, so that's all fine if you are working remotely, but um, what if you are working on your main workstation and actually editing your, ori your original files? So um, I, I own a laptop as well. I've got a MacBook Air, which I think is an awesome computer, um, but I don't like editing uh, on it simply because it's too small and I'm crouched over it and it's just not a comfortable thing to, um, to use um, when I want to be looking at uh, looking through all the wedding photos and culling them and, uh, and editing them. It's just not the best way to do it. So um, I much prefer to be in front of my ma main workstation, which is, um, which is an iMac. Uh, I'll just pull up the stats for you just so you can look. Uh, so that, here we go, it's so a 27 inch iMac, late 2013, it's 3.2 gigahertz Intel i5. I've got 16 gigabytes of uh, memory and um, this is the iMac that's got a fusion drive. So part of it is um, solid state, part of it is a regular hard drive. Um, anyway, that's just to give you an idea of what I'm running so that you can compare it to yours and uh, just, you know, just to get a good idea of what the performance is. Um, so going back to uh, the editing, as I was saying before, I don't want to be editing on the laptop, but I do want to take advantage of smart previews. Um, now, Lightroom, unfortunately, um, if there's a, an original file and a smart preview available, then um, Lightroom forces you to use the original file. So there's no way to um, say to Lightroom, look, I've got both of them, I'd like to, I'd like to use the smart preview. Um, that's not currently an option. Maybe they will make it one in the future, but at the moment you can't do that. So um, you need a way to trick Lightroom to um, think that there isn't an original file available, so it's forced to use the smart preview. Um, now, I've just got a selection of images here that I'm going to try and um, uh, show you in the, as an example. Um, so first of all, let's create smart previews of these images. Uh, and you do that by going up to library, then into previews, and then, um, where is it? Build smart previews there. So I'll just click on this. Um, and as you can see up in this top left corner, thank you, Harry, um, you, the smart previews are being built. So it does take a little bit of time. Um, hopefully it won't take too long or Harry's gonna lose it. But um, 
this can be integrated into your workflow when you import um, photos uh, from your from your memory cards. Excuse me. Um, you can actually tell Lightroom uh, when you import them into Lightroom uh, to apply the uh, to sorry to build smart previews. So um, you know you can go off and make a cup of tea, do whatever you want. It will take some time. It'll take extra time to build the smart previews. But when once you've had them um, built, then um, they will be there essentially forever until you decide to delete them. Um, but just um, for this for this um, for this tip, I've just decided to. Um, to create them just in front of you just so you can get an idea of how long it takes and how to do it. Okay, so we've almost finished here. Lightroom is um, building these smart previews. Um, something that I can talk about now actually while we wait is the um, importance of where these smart previews are actually located compared to where the original file is located. So um, I have set up um, Lightroom so that uh, my when, uh, my catalog, the Lightroom catalog, is actually synced to my Dropbox. Um, this was a sorry. This was a tip that um, Sam Sam heard actually uh, suggested, and I know a lot of other uh, photographers do this. It's just another backup option to make sure that you've got your uh, Lightroom catalog, um, which stores all the data of all your edits, keywords, ratings, all that kind of thing, um, somewhere safe. So I've got it um, in my Dropbox, um, and as you can see here. Uh, my catalogue's called Weddings and I've got my Weddings Smart Previews. Uh, it's .lr Lightroom Data. So that's what you should be looking out for. Um, your your catalogue, uh, sorry, your, light, your Smart Previews will be stored where your catalogue is. So as you can see here, I've got my Weddings LR Cat catalogue and then above it, that's where my Smart Previews are. So this will, um, by default, it will be um, stored uh, I'm not, I think it's uh, in the the photo. Uh, sorry, in your Lightroom folder. Um, but just have a search around for that. If you know where your catalog is, then you'll be able to find your smart previews. Um, if you haven't built any smart previews yet, obviously you won't see this um, smart previews file. Uh, but once you have built them, that's where it, where it will reside. So um, now we know where the smart previews are kept. We need to know where the, the photos are kept. Um, now I know where mine are kept, of course, but I'll just show you um, the quick quickest way to work it out is just to right click on one of your photos and then um, this is a Mac I'm using I'm not too sure on PC but it's probably something similar um, so show in finder click on that and then these are all my raw files so I'll just go back in the the file structure here um, sorry about that again and we just go back um, so I'm keeping them in a folder called uh, wedding client backups um, on my on an external hard drive, but um, just for the sake of this, I will show you um, where most of you guys will be. Uh, most of you guys will have your photos stored, and that is in your pictures folder. So I'll just go through here, weddings. Anyway, so that's where my um, Lightroom Lightroom uh, photos are stored. Sorry, the photos that Lightroom is reading from are stored here. So going back to the tip. Um, and sorry I'm rushing through this, obviously I want to get it done before Harry explodes on my lap here. Um, where am I? Oh uh, yes, going back to the tip, I need to disassociate the um, original files from the, um, the smart previews and trick Lightroom into thinking that only the smart previews are available. So, Sam's, uh, Sam Hurd's original tip, um, which is great, and um, I know a lot of other people are doing this, but um, he stores his um, original files on, a, on an external hard drive. Um, and then it's just a case of unplugging that hard drive, um, and then that's tricking Lightroom into thinking, hey, there's no more original files here, so we've got to use a smart preview. Um, now, this didn't suit my workflow because my external hard drive isn't uh, flash-based, it's just a regular hard disk drive, so it's um, some, there's something in there spinning. So it's not something that I want to unplug a lot because um, it's going to cause a lot of wear and tear on the hard drive and also it takes time, like you have to eject it and uh, properly uh, wait for it to stop spinning um, and then um, yeah, unplug it. So it's not something, and then plug it in back, back in afterwards. Obviously, uh, it's not something I wanted to be doing regularly. So um, the workaround that I found is that if you find where your um, original fo uh, photos are located, 
So um, usually that will be in your My Pictures folder. Um, temporarily, you can go in and so where's My Pictures? Here it is. Um, you can just change the name of that folder. So let's see if we can do that. Maybe not on the Pictures one. Let's do it on 2015 just for the sake of the example. So I know that the photos that are in Lightroom are being read from my 2015 folder. So I'm just going to add a dash number one. You can do whatever you want there. Um, and then hit enter. So now, um, obviously Lightroom, I'm going to restart it, um, won't know um, where the fo photos are, the original um, photo files are, because I've just changed the name of the folder. And Lightroom isn't smart enough to um, say, oh, he's updated the folder name outside of Lightroom. So, um, you know, we have to change the, fo the file structure so we'll be able to read from there again. Um, anything that you do outside of Lightroom is just completely separate to Lightroom. Okay, so as you can see, I'm still using the, the trial of Lightroom 6. I'm going to purchase it though. As a side note, I think it is uh, excellent and worth the money. Um, anyway, so we're back into Lightroom and now if we load up one of the photos, um, you can see in this top right corner, there's Smart Preview. So what this means, before there would have been another icon, um, but this, as you can see with a pop-up here, the original is offline, but this photo can still be edited. So what we have successfully done here is um, tricked Lightroom into thinking that the original is not available, and that's purely because, if we go back to it, I've added this um, erroneous um, letter, uh, sorry, the, 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 the dash one after the 2015, um, so that Lightroom no longer knows that um, this, the original folder, the photo is exist in existence. Oh gosh, it's hard to do this with a baby on your lap. Okay, so nearly finished. Going back to Lightroom. Um, so yeah, as I was saying before, this is now a smart preview. Um, and I've already added, uh, I've already edited this file, I'm sorry, but um, if I were to uh, do a before and after, editing the um, original file and then to time it and then to edit the smart preview and to time that, you'll see that it is much quicker to edit a smart preview. Um, unfortunately, I don't, have, um, I don't have time to do that for you today, but just have a play around with it. Um, just to give you an idea, look, if I, if I flick through all of these photos, I'm actually in the develop module, which is a much slower um, traditionally to learn, uh, to, sorry, to open than the library module. But look how fast it is. There's no loading lag whatsoever. Um, and I can go into these easily and just start editing. It's very easy and very quick. Um, so yeah, I'll... Um, with this, uh, when you do go to export those photos, um, if you keep them as smart previews, then they'll only export at, I think it's just over 2,000 pixels, but you can, um, you can look that up. Um, in other words, they won't export at their full resolution because they are just merely a preview. So it's important that you don't forget to change um, the folder name back to what it was originally um, before you export. So let's open up Lightroom again. Um, and then this time, because the folder name is back to what it was originally, um, Lightroom knows where the original files are. And as you can see up here, it says original plus smart preview, which means that Lightroom is now uh, loading from the, uh, the original file. So, um, well, sorry, I've lost my thread again. Um, yeah, so just to round up, um, Let's, let's get this back off the screen. Uh, just to round up, um, this is just a way uh, for you to speed up your workflow. Now, um, when, when you're going through a lot of images, um, you will notice that even with a very fast computer setup, I'm using, um, this is reading from a solid drive, so it's, it's very fast. But still, when, um, when you're doing some um, heavy develop uh, presets or whatever it is you use, especially things like uh, noise reduction, sharpening, um, and any localized adjust adjustments as well. For example, with the adjustment brush, I found um, it co does cause Lightroom lag even on a very fast setup. So um, I found that editing from the smart previews rather than the original files can help speed up your workflow significantly. Um, and this is something anything can anyone can do if you've got Lightroom five or um, later. Um, um, and it's obviously free, it's very simple to do, and I encourage you all to have a play around with it. Uh, apologies again for me speeding through this. Um, 
yeah, like I said, uh, I've got a I've got a little baby on my lap that I'm trying to contend with. But um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, please like, share, and comment away, and um, I'll be back soon with another tip. Thank you.